All right, we're going to be making a pea pod pendant. I have some beautiful little cultured pearls here. This is a sterling silver spoon, and what I've done is I've cut it off at an angle like this because I'm gonna use this portion here to create the bail for my pendant. And I'm using a pretty small spoon. You wanna use something small uh, just because unless you're using very, very large pearls, your pearls will get kind of lost in there if you don't use something on the smaller side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove some of this edge on either side by grinding it down. And I'm also going to grind and smooth that area up here to fix that, uh, that cut and make that nice and smooth. So we're gonna go over to the uh, disc sander and remove some of this metal. All right, I have installed the new longer mini pin that we have into the bender and I'm using the block that has the small mini pin channel inside the middle area and I'm going to start by bending it down near the tip. Don't really have to be too concerned if you get marks because they're going to be hidden inside once you place your pearls in there. So just rocking it back and forth. and doing this evenly so I don't get too much of a bend on one side and not enough on the other side. Okay, and you can see I'm getting marks in there, but like I said, that doesn't really concern me. And because I've got a long tail on the top, I'm having to come in at a bit of an angle. So I'm gonna go one way I'm going to go the next. And get some of this closed up. Okay. And actually all these little dings here on the bottom. I'm I definitely like that. I actually think I'm going to create more of that purposely just because it, it makes it more realistic than having it super shiny. So I'm just gonna kinda create some more gouges in there basically that are not seen from the inside, but are seen as texture on the outside. get for that right now. You can always press down a little bit this direction as well. You know, you can be really creative with the tools that you have. Just because something was made for one purpose doesn't mean it can't be used for something else. So I'm getting those curled in more. creating some, some dings and marks on there. And I'm actually all right with that. Okay. Edges over a little bit more. So I'm taking one of the punches from the dapping set and placing it inside there. I'm gonna use a rubber block underneath. Just grab that. Use a rubber block underneath. And I'm going to use my little rubber weighted hammer. And I'm going to curve those edges over. And I'll go down in size on the punches until I get 
what I'm looking for. And see how the edges are curling in there. Again, I, I really like this, this uh, bumpy, organic look. I think that looks really neat. So let me grab, let me grab my nylon jaw pliers. Pull that in a little bit. Okay. I think that looks pretty good there. Somehow or another, I lost some of the video uh, that I was working with, and so I have missed some of how to get these pearls in here. But I'm going to show you what I was doing. So what I did was I started squeezing this end to get this end tapered in. I'm going to continue to do it a little bit more. I'm not concerned about the marks that I'm leaving at this point just because I want this to look organic. So I'm not really worried about it. So once I got that end tapered down like that, I dropped my first pearl down. Then I was able to squeeze it on this side and then squeeze it on this side. Then we're gonna squeeze it right above the pearl. And what it does is it locks that pearl in place. Okay, so I've done the same thing. I've dropped another pearl down in there and started squeezing down. So what's happening is the back and the front are starting to compress like this. So what we started with was it was a bowl shape. So now we're getting flatter shape here. And just continue to manipulate it by squeezing and pressing. until you are happy with the way everything fits. Okay, so just a tiny bit of a click, I'm trying to figure out which one is making the, the noise like it's moving. Oh, now I'm not hearing it. Okay, so let's drop the next pearl in. You can use a two-part epoxy or E6000 to hold your pearls in place. So I want that pearl not to touch this pearl. I want it to have a gap like this one. So what I need to do is to squeeze this in a little bit. So I want the metal to separate the pearls from each other. And you know, the way I'm doing it is not like this is the only way to do it and everything else is wrong. Um, like I've always said, you're the artist you can make it do whatever you want it to do. You can make it look however you want it to look. Okay, let's see where that pearl sits. It's starting to come up, so it's not, it's kind of hard to get this other side and still keep it in the camera. Okay, so now I have a little bit of a gap there. You can make your pearls touch. You can make them have a gap. You know, it definitely is really up to you. Okay, now I'm going to squeeze right above that pearl, and what we're doing is locking that pearl in place. A little bit of a disadvantage because I want to try and keep this in the camera view. Okay, you can hear it's clicking, so it's not quite locked in there yet. I'm going to bring these sides in a little bit. I think a lot of Things like this, it's just a matter of playing with it to get what you like. Let me see if one more pearl will work or not. I could have one, you know, I could leave one where it's a little more exposed than the other ones. And I uh, definitely would want to glue that in because I don't want to, I don't want to close that up too much there. I don't want to close it too much. Let me see how much I can close that. Okay. 
So I'm just taking my round nose pliers and I'm turning those sides in. And I'll just drop that pearl back in there and see what it looks like. You might want to, you know, wave three, four. If you're going to do these for like grandmothers or mothers jewelry, and so you've got, like, you know, one P for every child or grandchild, obviously you're going to adjust as necessary. I kind of like it that way. So obviously in this case, since I'm not going to close down over top of that pearl, I'm going to need to glue that into place. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bend the stem to create the bale. Okay, that looks that looks pretty good. One of them's clicking. This one here is clicking a little bit. That just means it's loose. So you're just going to manipulate the metal around it until you get it tight. And again, you can use glue. It's, you know, there's definitely no issue in using glue with pearls. I hear just a little bit of a clicking, but I'm not sure which pearl is the offender. I'm not too terribly concerned about it. Okay. All right, so that other pearl is going to sit right up in the top there. Let me grab it. And we're going to glue that in place. Okay, so before I do that, because that's going to be like the last thing we do, I'm going to bend this stem here. So I'm going to start by going in the opposite direction of the way I want my curl to go. And, you know, again, you make your curls any way you want them. Okay. Now I'm going to start coming back the other direction, right where that bend turns back. I'm going to start bringing it back. So I don't want to do it up here. I want to start down here and coax it from here. And just bend it however however you would like so I'm going to make a curl here at the top and I'm kind of gonna bring it down in a spiral I'm going to turn this down because this is going to be the bale for my pendant. So I'm going to turn it to the side because I'm going to loop a chain through there. this down. Alright, then I'm going to loop a chain through there. Turn that all in there. Alright, now I'm going to grab some sandpaper. And I'm going to do a little bit of work before I glue that in. I want to have everything uh, polished and ready to go before I glue that in. I don't want to do any manipulating on the piece. 
after that glue has been put in there. And these others are held in with the compression of the metal, so I'm not really concerned about them moving. I'm not um, too terribly worried about removing all of the marks. Like again, I said, I want to leave things more organic. You can, you know, you can do all kinds of dings and buffs and make it as organic or as smooth as you choose. One of the neat things about this piece of silverware is it still has the sterling on the back of the handle there. Otherwise, I would put a maker's uh, or a mark. I would put a 925 mark on there. That looks pretty neat. Again, it's going to hang with a chain like that. You can add patina if you choose. If you want things to look more antique looking. And I actually think I'm going to do that. I used to be a big fan of bright and shiny. But I got to where I really appreciated patina and how it gives more of an aged look. It also gives more dimension. So we do carry uh, a liver of sulfur patina gel on the website. I'll put a link to that below the video. So what I'm going to do, looks pretty neat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some patina on here after I get this uh, sanded. So as, like I said, I'm not looking to get the marks out, but I'm more looking just to smooth them so nothing is rough. You don't want anything rough to the touch. And you could leave this kind of a satiny finish. You could, you know, high polish it. You do want to stay away from any compounds at this point because if you get any compound in there, you know, it's going to be very difficult for you to clean out. You don't want to get compounds on the pearls and, you know, make the pearls look, um, look dirty. You want to keep them nice and shiny. So I'm going to put some patina on this. I'm going to put some liver of sulfur on this and then uh, I'll come back and show you what we're going to do to, uh, to really dress this up by removing some of that patina. Okay, so I've added patina, and this is a patina gel that we carry. Um, it's, it's called liver of sulfur. So what liver of sulfur does is it creates um, this dark patina. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of that darkness, and it's going to give more uh, depth and balance to how the piece looks. And after we get that done, I'm gonna glue that last pearl in there. So I've got the patina on there. Uh, you can do this a couple of different ways. One is you can put it in water. You can put a small amount of this in water. Hot water works the best. And then you can drop your piece in and let it sit until it achieves uh, a dark color. I like to get it pretty much, you know, dark as I can get it. That way I can remove as little or as much as I want. You can also layer it. You can dip it in. You can rinse it under cool water and then you can dip it in again and that will, um, that will darken it up even further. There's lots of different ways. Um, there's different things that you can do with a liver of sulfur to create different colors. You can research that on the internet. Um, that would definitely be a video for another time. And what I've done, what I find is the easiest is just to brush it on with a small paintbrush, just to brush it on. So that way you get a couple of benefits that way. One is it's less waste. Uh, because once you have used that liver sulfur in water, it loses its efficacy, so you really need to dump it. It's, it's, you can't really save it uh, for future use. So if you use just the, a little bit of the gel and you paint the gel on, you're going to save more product. The other benefit is you can get it exactly where you want it. There may be places you don't want any patina at all. 
and this way you can brush it exactly where you want it to go. Okay, there is uh, instructions that come with that um, that detail how to use it. So I've gotten it on there, and what I'm going to do is use my wire brass brush, and I'm going to brush across. I don't want to get my brass brush on the pearls for fear of scratching them. We do carry these brass brushes on our website. I really like the brass brush um, for removing patina. Gives a nice brushed finish and doesn't remove a lot of patina. I like to keep my things a little on the darker side and just create highlights on the high spots with the brass brush. And get down in there just a little bit. Just putting my finger over top of the pearl so I don't inadvertently scratch them. You can use Pro Polish pads to remove patina. You can use these little buffing blocks. You can buy these at a lot of these, a lot of the beauty supply stores. You can use these as well. This will remove a little more patina than the brass brush will. So you can, you know, hit it in key areas with that. Just want to go maybe like right across the top of those peaks. Again, I'm just putting my finger over top the curl. I wouldn't recommend doing patina before you set the pearls because the, the tools and all that are going to uh, make the patina not look real nice. And then you're going to end up having to re-patina it anyhow. Okay. If you brush off too much, you can always put more on. It's not a problem to add more. All right, so I'm gonna get some glue and we're gonna glue that last pearl in. All righty, so I'm just gonna put this in with some E6000. We sell these little tubes here on the website. I like the little tubes because if you don't use a lot of E6000, it tends to dry up. So if you only use glue sporadically, you might want to grab uh, some of those small tubes. All right, got a little of that in there. Grab my tweezer and we'll get that pearl set in its place. All righty, that way I don't have to do any more manipulating because I, I really like how it's open here at the top. It's almost like the pearls are trying to bust loose. Okay, so there you have the peas in a pod pendant. If you have any questions, be sure to post them. And we'll see you again very soon for the next tutorial.